Hello and welcome back to the videos. This video it's a bit of a catch up, general talking about where things are, how things are, because it's been quite a while since the last video. So what I thought is first of all I'd tell you about what's been going on so uh, thank you to all the comments and, uh, and nice messages that I've had myself and my family are all okay now unfortunately we did have COVID uh, a month or so ago uh, but we've all recovered all fully back to normal so that's good news and thank goodness for that um, so that was that's something that slowed all the videos down for a while uh, so what have I been up to? Well, those that watch me on Instagram, I'll put the Instagram links below, saw Vauxhall Zafira has been through its MOT. Earlier in the year, the Vauxhall Corsa got through it. Uh, so we've got a clean bill of health on both of those cars, which is great news. On the Volvo 480, not as far forward as I'd hoped. I really wanted to get this car MOT'd and actually working today. You can probably see from the amount of dust that's on it, it's not got very far at all so I'm going to take you for a quick look around I'll show you where I've got to because I have made progress and we are getting forward a long way on it still loads to do but I'll show you where I've been getting up to on the Volvo let's show you where we're up to on the Volvo so a lot of it was welding work as you remember so let's take a look at the rear arch this is of course the main area of problem you can see I've got a little bit of surface rust that's because I've ground all this back so I need to smooth that off and solve that first but you can see I've got a little patch plate in here to follow the contour we've got the replacement outer arch in place we've also got the sill end panel welded in now now there's a bit of tidying and stuff because my welds aren't good but they're holding nice and solid and they're working you can see I've ground these ones back a bit so really they need cleaning up again priming with the yellow sort of filler primer that I've used just so that that's all nice and done now there is a little bit on the inside that I need to finish off but other than that I think the right arch is just about done which I'm quite pleased about because there's an awful lot more that needs doing uh, like I'd like to take the these uh, sort of trailing arms as part of the suspension here I mean obviously the the shocks are completely gone uh, springs not too bad condition to be fair uh, but I want to take the arm off uh, clean it up and give it a nice coating a little bit like I did with the uh, this cross arm here that goes across that's the brake pipe so we can put the brake caliper back on I've got those stored in the house and then hopefully that starts to get the rear of the car back into one piece uh, inside everything is stripped out I'm hoping I can remember how all of the interior of the car goes back together because there is pretty much nothing in there at the moment I think that one's going to be a little bit later on we of course have a new window motor and mechanism to go onto the driver's side that's brand new because that one was faulty in the past um, there's also still a slight water leak that I think is creeping its way in down inside and actually going into the car itself that that's been causing me a bit of a headache as well so that's a little bit frustrating and just last week I also started to take a look at the front to work out what we'd need to do in here because let me just take the wheel back off again I'll show you what I mean so obviously obviously the uh, the discs and pads are going to be renewed I'm going to do that uh, the caliper on this one 
probably should be refurbed so I'll take that off and refurb it. Now the the lower arms you can see the bushes are shot to bits so they're going to need dropped off. Now whether I'm going to replace the whole thing which saves me having to take the bushes out and replace them or whether I'm going to try and do that I'm not quite sure yet. Um, to be honest the hydraulic strut, the damper, that needs replacing because that's also getting quite crusty. Spring isn't too good either so that's probably the same again. So we're talking about quite a lot of the front um, all of the front gear probably going to get replaced out so that's another job uh, also there's a um, the arm there also needs replacing so I think that's something else to look at uh, that'll just be a parts order I think when we get a little bit closer to the time now you can also just make out in the background here that I've taken the so that's the auxiliary belt there and that's the auxiliary pulley on the crank but you can just make out there that's the timing belt the tooth timing belt because I took the timing belt cover off because I want to see how to do the timing belt on this one now the biggest problem is access access to the timing belt you can see is going to be pretty tight um, I'm probably going to need to take this uh, idler pulley off uh, sorry auxiliary belt pulley off so we can actually get at the timing belt behind it because access here there's not a lot of clearance and the top isn't much better either maybe the case that we need to take the engine off its engine mount and cant it over a little bit or jack it up so we can get at it from the top so that's another future job unfortunately so you can see there's quite a few things that are piling up. Now if I grab the camera you can come with me. What we'll do is we'll open the bonnet and I'll show you what things look like under there. As you can see the inside. Oh we also have to fix the door lever. There's a lever that should go in here that's what kind of holds the door open on you um, unfortunately the weld has given way inside so I'm gonna have to somehow weld a panel back into there and fit it that's gonna be fairly tricky because of the access can't really get in any easier than that so that's going to be rather tricky uh, like I said you can see the inside uh, that's the old window mechanism and the rest of it, it's not too bad, bit of uh, sagging uh, roof liner, but I'm not too worried about things like that. Obviously I've got the ECU and things like that disconnected at the moment whilst I'm doing the welding because I definitely want to protect the electronics because trying to get hold of the electronics or replacements would be difficult. Also, the, uh, the info centre, the instrument cluster, that's going to be a tricky one. That was intermittent last time I played about with it. Um, now it's not a necessity, but it tells you things like the amount of fuel you've got left, uh, oil temperature, you can see there. It actually tells you average fuel and things like that, uh, what the engine temperature and condition, things like that. It's quite a clever little system that you control from the centre here. What you do is you click that through and that will update the display. Uh, so that was that was acting strange last time. I, that's well known to be bad contact at the back of it, but it means taking this very flimsy piece of plastic fascia off again. I mean, I have done it a few times, but the fewer times you do that, the better, really. So, again, future jobs. Let's have a quick look. in the engine bay. If I can remember how to open it. It is of course self-locking on the lever there which I love that feature. 
and there you can see the uh, the Volvo two litre engine there's the top of the timing cover so you can see the timing belt at the top is a little bit easier so maybe it is the case of lifting the engine but you can you can see there's not a lot of a gap down the side there for us to get at the belt or to lock the lock the main uh, the cranks and things so that may be tricky but otherwise the rest of the engine bay pretty much as we'd left it you can see I've got the uh, the brake line still disconnected and capped off just whilst I do the work on it so those will need a good flush through when we actually start to get those back into place so uh, tell you what let's let's get back onto the back and we'll have a look at the uh, the bit of welding to finish the back off so what I'm trying to do is measure and make out the pieces of metal that I need so you can see there's a gap here in between this panel and this so what I'm doing is a bit of cardboard and as um, as I saw in a recent Ed China video uh, somebody that I really recommend and highly rate to be honest I watch his videos a lot for inspiration and knowing a, a little bit about what to do but a uh, bit of CAD cardboard aided design so what we do is we try to try to match the shape of what I'm trying to do here which is kind of tricky but what I'm thinking is something like that and then I'm going to make it in like that so try to make it in one piece because the fewer cuts and bends of the bit of cardboard the fewer cuts and bends we have to do of the sheet metal so let me try and get this right and I'll show you what I've come up with
the panel I've got is now clipped and held in place top bit I'll come to in a minute but the, the bottom bit is what I want to do first quite difficult to show on the camera but if I show you if I just gently push that piece out that lines up quite nicely with this so I'm ready to weld that so what I'm going to do is do a few tack welds along here get that up. I'm going to try and weld a couple onto here as well to hold it against the outside panel and then fill it in so I think that should work Here we go. So, you can see I've got this piece, well, I call it welded. It's not the best piece of weld. I've shined it up a little bit. It does need a little bit of grinding off just to smooth it down, but that'll hold. Um, I've found out that this panel is not going to fit very well, so I'm probably going to end up cutting it off and attaching that as a separate piece rather than as part of the piece I've just attached. But least that's another piece in place we need a bit along the bottom here to cover this hole so we'll bend a piece and get that one ready and then we can get the one at the top as well done after a bit more work you can see I've now got that panel piece in it's not got the line I wanted on it I wanted that to be a bit smoother you can see the uh, the welds are fairly rough and ready but it's holding I've shined them up a bit so just need to grind them down smooth them off a bit and then at least that's those pieces done you can see the edge there as well the camera's not very good at close-ups so there we go so let's smooth them off and let's try and get a bit of a finish to this bit that I've just done and then I think that's uh, not bad going Well, I think I'm going to call time today. Done quite a bit of work on it now. This is just a protective coat. It's not the greatest. Uh, you can see I've got quite a few streaks and things, but I'm more about protecting what I've just done because obviously it is all bare metal. I don't want it starting to rust away. I want to get it all nice and sealed. So I'm going to do this, let it dry, do another one over the top, and that should give us some protection. I can then work on smoothing it out and starting to make it look a little bit nicer. But for now, the protection's in place, so I think we're all good. Welding, mm, still got a lot to learn on welding, but 
the welds are holding the pieces are solid so I'm quite happy with that I think I'll uh, I think I'll give in to that one so that's about all I'm going to do on this video thanks a lot for coming along and staying with me obviously it's been a long time since some videos so do put a comment or a like down below I'd really appreciate it showing that you are enjoying what I'm doing and if you want me to do some more as well or if there's anything you want to see let me know otherwise I'll see you in the next video thanks again for watching